Diglycerides are added to many foods, including ice cream sandwiches, flour tortillas, peanut butter, coffee creamer, and many other foods. But what are diglycerides? That's what we'll see here. This is the chemical structure for a diglyceride. And we can see that diglycerides contain two fatty acids connected to a glycerol backbone. And if this metabolite had a third fatty acid, that would be a triglyceride. So diglycerides equals triglycerides with one less fatty acid. So why are diglycerides, or DAGs for short, why are they important? One reason is because diglycerides are associated with an older epigenetic age. Now there's some talk online that all epigenetic clocks are worthless, and this couldn't be farther from the truth. All epigenetic clocks are not the same for their association with risk of death for all causes. And I covered that in an earlier video, in, and I linked to it in the right corner. So here we're gonna take a look at diglyceride, or DAG levels, plotted against the best epigenetic clock for its association with all-cause mortality risk. Again, data in the video format in the right corner. GRIMAGE, DNAM stands for uh, DNA methylation, so this is the epigenetic test GRIMAGE. And we can see that there's a lot of red circles on this plot. That's an increase in age acceleration, which means that for each of the DAG metabolites shown on this plot, they were associated with an older grim age value relative to chronological age, and this is moving in the wrong direction. In terms of what the actual data shows, on the x-axis we've got number of carbons, and note that fatty acids contain carbons, as shown there. And on the y-axis we've got number of double bonds, so the fatty acids that are in diglycerides can be saturated, so they have no double bonds, one double bond, which is a monounsaturated fatty acid, and then two or more double bonds, which would be a polyunsaturated fatty acid. So regardless of whether the fatty acids contained in the diglycerides are saturated, mono, or polyunsaturated, we can see that there's a lot of red on this plot. So in other words, diglycerides as a group are associated with an older epigenetic age. Now note that, as a quick note, note that there are some gray spots. So in that case, that's when diglycerides were not associated with, not significantly associated with grim age. But you can see also that, that, that the vast majority of diglycerides on this plot, a lot of different diglyceride metabolite species are associated with an older epigenetic age. So that's one reason why DAGs are important. Another is that they're associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk, which is what we'll see here. This is a study of people that had an average age at 50, 54 years at baseline that were followed for up to 23 years. So in other words, starting from the initial assessment of plasma levels of diglycerides, who was alive and who had died up to 23 years later. On the left, we've got metabolite levels, so in this case, diglycerides or DAGs, and you can see that the nomenclature, let's just go through one or two as, as examples. So C320, that's a diglyceride with two fatty acids that their carbons add up to 32, and they have no double bond. So this is a diglyceride that has two saturated fatty acids. 32-1 would be two fatty acids that have 32 carbons, but with one of those fatty acids having a monounsaturated fatty acid. All right, so in terms of all-cause mortality risk, we can see that all of the six diglycerides listed here are associated with an increased hazard ratio for mortality. In other words, each of the six diglycerides on this plot are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. And we can see that in two ways. First, obviously, by looking at the p-value and the false discovery rate, FDR, which accounts for multiple comparisons. In both situations, p-value and FDR, they're less than 0.05. So all of the DAGs on this list are associated with a significantly higher risk of death for all causes. We can also see that a second way by looking at the hazard ratio in conjunction with the 95% confidence interval, or CI, which is a data in parentheses. So for the data in parentheses, if those data are completely to the right of one, in, in the case of C320, we can see that it's 1.05 to 1.12, so that's completely to the right of one. That will be a significantly, significant association for an increased all-cause mortality risk. And in terms of how much of an increased risk, that will be 1.08, so 8% higher for relatively higher levels of that diglyceride. And then just going down the list, we can see that risk ranges from 5 to 8% for the diglycerides on this list. Now, the good news is that these DAGs can be tracked. And to do that, I've been using at-home metabolomics with Iolo's kit, which includes 41 diglycerides and 10 all-cause mortality-associated DAGs. 
And besides these 41 metabolites, this kit also includes 582 others. So if you want to use this kit yourself, discount link in the video's description. And note that I've got lots of videos on metabolomics using this kit. I've got now 17 tests. I'm waiting on test number 18. This is a foundation or one of the foundational uh, biomarkers that I'm, or group of biomarkers that I'm measuring in the approach. So what's my data? That's what we'll see here. So this is the raw data for all of the all-cause mortality associated diglycerides since I started testing in 2023. And again, that's over 17 tests. And all of the data shown here are in micromolar values. On the left, we've got the test date. And then at the top of each column, we've got the individual DAG or DAGs. So let's go through a couple of them because it, it, it may be hard to understand what those numbers actually mean. So the DAG, starting with the DAG on the left, DAG 16 underscore 16, or 16 underscore 16, is the diglyceride that contains palmitate, the palm, palmitic acid, in both of the two fatty acid containing spots for the diglyceride. And then when you add those together, so 16 and 16 makes 32, and because palmitate is saturated, that's C320 DAG. For the C321 DAG, that can be made by a variety of ways. In Iolo's kit, it contains two metabolites that correspond to the DAG321. It includes the DAG160061, so palmitate and palmitoleic acid. And it also includes DAG140181, so meristate and oleate, so oleic acid, which is found in things like olive oil and olives. So there are a variety of different ways to make these DAGs. And without focusing on each of the individual DAGs, what I care most about when considering that DAGs as a group are associated with an older epigenetic age, I care most about the DAG sum, the sum of all the DAGs, these 10 DAGs here for each test, which then raises the question, what's optimal? When considering the epigenetic data and the all-cause mortality data for at least those six DAGs, lower may be better. So with that in mind, for my first 13 tests, average DAG sum values was 9.7 micromolar. But it's been a bit worse for the past four tests, consistently for the past four tests, at 12.4 micromolar, which is data going in the wrong direction. So what can I do or what can I potentially do to keep DAGs low? So for that, we're going to take a look at DAG correlations with diet, where I've evaluated correlations for DAGs or the DAG sum with diet. And for those who don't know, I've weighed almost all of my food since 2015. I then take that data, I enter it into Chronometer, the diet tracking app Chronometer, and also discount link in the video's description. And then I manually input those data into a spreadsheet. So then each blood test has a corresponding average dietary intake. For example, if there are 50 days in between tests, I can take the average dietary intake over that 50 days and then line it up with the blood test. So each blood test has a corresponding average dietary intake. And because I have so many tests, I then look at correlations and try to move biomarkers towards youth and lowest all-cause mortality risk by following the correlations. All right, so in terms of the DAG sum correlations with diet, the correlation that was atop the list is with niacin, vitamin B3, which is what we'll see here. And if you're interested in seeing the full list of correlations, that's on the correlations tier on Patreon. On the y-axis, we've got the DAG sum, and on the x-axis, we've got the average daily niacin intake in milligrams per day. So in terms of that correlation, we can see that there. With a correlation coefficient, lowercase r, of 0.67, and the p-value is less than 0.05 at 0.003. In other words, relatively higher niacin intake, um, or vitamin B3 intake, is significantly correlated with a higher DAG sum, which would be data going in the wrong direction. Now note that just from diet alone, I can get about 50 milligrams of niacin per day, which is about 3x the RDA. But to go higher than about 50 milligrams of niacin per day, I've got to supplement with nicotinic acid. And I've been using nicotinic acid specifically because it raises my NAD, which can tend to be on the lower side. But these data suggest that at higher niacin intakes, which in my case are coming almost exclusively from nicotinic acid supplementation, that may be a part of the higher DAG sum story, at least based on the correlation with niacin. But we can look at it more specifically. And that's because I've been tracking NAD levels, blood intracellular NAD levels. So is NAD associated with the DAG sum? And that's what we'll see here. 
with the DAG sum now on the y-axis, and we've got the NAD, blood intracellular levels of NAD, on the x. And to measure NAD levels, I've been sending blood to Ginfinity. If you want to measure your own NAD levels, there's a discount link in the video's description. So in terms of the correlation, we can see that there. And note, first, starting with the p-value, it's just outside of significance at 0.05, at 0.08 relative to 0.05. But note that that correlation is 0.43. It's a positive correlation, and it's moving in the wrong direction. So these data would suggest that NAD levels, blood intracellular NAD levels above a certain level, say 30 micromolar, may be associated with higher levels, higher plasma levels of DAGs, which would be going in the wrong direction. So here, too, there's a bit of uh, talk online that NAD levels greater than 60 or 65 may be optimal for health and mitochondrial function. But in my case, this is now the second line of data. The first was lysophosphatidylcholines. And if you missed that video, I'll link to it in the right corner too. This is the second line of data that may suggest that NAD levels, at least for me, higher than 30 micromolar may not be optimal based on at least these two biomarker groups, lysophosphatidylcholines and diglycerides. Now, there's another variable to this story that could be a play, and it could be nicotinic acid. Would I have the same data with uh, nicotinamide or NMN, which is nicotinamide-based, nicotinamide mononucleotide, or nicotinamide riboside. I don't know because I haven't supplemented with those consistently. And I, in contrast, I have consistently supplemented with nicotinic acid. Nonetheless, it suggests that data around NAD levels around 30 micromolar may be best for me in terms of minimizing a biomarker that's related to an increased all-cause mortality risk and an older epigenetic age. But for the NAD story, this isn't a perfect, uh, perfect correlation because as you can see, I've had DAG sum values greater than 10 micromolar, which is, again, a little bit too high relative to my lowest data. And that's even at low NAD levels or less than 30 micromolar. So I, I'm planning on continuing testing for both NAD and metabolomics. And all those 17 tests would seem like a lot of data to flesh out this story. I'm going to have to continue to collect more data and see how this story plays out. If you've ever wondered what's optimal for biomarkers, well, I have a new Patreon tier dedicated just to that. It currently includes 33, the 33 biomarkers shown here. And this isn't the reference ranges. Anybody can get that from an LM these days. It's what may be optimal based on how each of these biomarkers changes during aging and or their association with all-cause mortality risk. It currently includes more than two hours of video content from 48 published references, and all of the references are linked under that video. So if you're interested in that, check it out. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon, where I offer, where I show biomarker correlations, not just for DAGs with niacin and diet, but then correlations for everything with all other biomarkers, stuff on the clinical chemistries, uh, stuff from epigenetics. I post correlations, resting heart rate, heart rate variability. So correlations for lots of stuff are posted there. I've also got four other tiers, which I post regularly. So if you're interested in that, check it out. We've also got discount and affiliate links that you can use to test yourself that help support the channel. And note that any of these discount and affiliate links that are here, I'm either currently using or have recently used. I would never have something on the channel that I'm not actively using or have recently used that I believe in or that I don't believe in. And those include ultalabtest.com, which is where I get the majority of my blood tests performed, the clearly filtered water filter, which I'm using every day, at-home metabolomics covered in the video, or microbiome composition, and I just sent the sample for analysis, so we'll see how that plays out. NAD testing with Ginfinity, epigenetic testing, at-home blood testing with Cyfox Health, which includes that epigenetic test Grimage, green tea, which I drink every day, diet tracking with chronometer, also using that every day, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch, new merch, including the figuring stuff out as my drug, which I've got on here. And we've got the channel theme. So if you're interested in these designs, there's a link in the video's description. Thanks for watching. Hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.